In this video, we are gonna go over how to do G++ and Valgrind from the command line. The first thing to note is that if you are on a Windows machine, you're gonna have to do a little bit extra work to get your terminal in the place that you can follow along. I'll link a tutorial to Git Bash in the description below. Once you've followed that and can now execute Linux commands from the terminal, you should be good to follow along. If you're on a Mac or Linux machine, you already have the tools you need to get going. This tutorial also assumes you already have a basic understanding of how to use the terminal, um, things like changing directories or executing commands. So the first thing you wanna do is go to the directory where your code is that you wanna test. Here I just have a main file, but in later labs you will probably have different .h and .cpp files. Um, what I'm going to show you is going to be the same no matter how many files are in your project. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you only zip up any code files, so cpp and .h files. The command to do this is zip, and then whatever you want to name the file, I will just call it code.zip. Then you're going to zip up star.cpp, which will grab every single cpp file, if you have .h files, you can also do star .h, and that will grab all of the .h files. But because I don't have any, I'm not going to do that. And then you hit enter. And that will now zip up your project, which we have here in code.zip. What we're going to do, in order to get into a Linux environment where we can run G++ and Valgrind, we're going to transfer this over to the machines that are on campus. Um, the way to do this is very simple. You type in the command scp, which allows you to securely copy over to a different server. And then what we want to copy is code.zip. And then you're gonna put in your net ID, followed by at schizo.cs.byu.edu. And then you're gonna to wanna to put the directory of where you want to go. If for simplicity, it might be good to put desktop. Um, I have a folder on my desktop that I used for transferring stuff over, so that's where I'm going to put it. Then we click this, and depending on your internet connection, this might take a minute or two. Now that it's copied over, we are now going to log into the machines on campus where we just copied this over. The command to do this is very similar. It's SSH, and then exactly what we typed in before, your net ID followed by the at schizo.cs.byu.edu. And that's what you do. When you try to log in, you are going to be asked to give your password. Um, mine worked instantly because I have something set up called SSH keys. If you're interested in doing that, um, there's plenty of articles online about how to do that. So now that we are online, uh, we need to just go to the directory where we save this code. And here I have my code. Now, once you are where your zip folder is, you can just unzip the name of that and it will unzip it, and now you have your code here. And if you'd like, you can get rid of the zip file since we no longer need it. So, let's take a look at this code real quick. Um, it's very simple, it just is a main file. There is some memory leak that is right here. We're allocating memory but not deleting it, and then it outputs hello world. So the way to run this is, you will type G++, and then I like to put in w all because that will show you all of the possible warnings or errors when you try to compile. Then dash g, which is going to enable line numbers for Valgrind or things like that. And then we will say what we are compiling, which is, um, in this case, it's just main.cpp, but you want to compile all of your CPP files. So it's good practice to just do star.cpp. And that way you can use this command when you have more than one CPP file. And lastly, we are going to do dash O, and this is going to be the name of the executable. I'm just going to call it test. You can name it whatever you like. So now this will allocate, and you can already see because I put the W all in there, that it's warning me about an unused variable, which is good. Um, that would hopefully point you in the right direction, but Let's say, for example, you didn't know that was the case. Now, if we want to run it, we should see we have a test executable there. So we can do dot slash test. And that will run the program, which is hello world. But we do have memory leaks. So now what we want to do is run Valgrind. 
To run Valgrind, you type Valgrind dash dash leak check equals full dash dash show leak kinds equals all. Then you run your executable, which is dot slash test. And then if you have input and output files, which you probably will for the labs, you would provide them here in dot txt, out dot txt, whatever. But here I don't have any. And then we run this. And here we see that there are some bytes in memory that are lost because we have some leaks. And it tells us, because we put the dash G in there, that in main line 7, there is something that we nude up but did not delete. So open up your favorite text editor. Mine happens to be Vim. And if we go to line 7, we see we have this right here. So our options are we could just delete it because we don't use it. Um, like delete the line, or we can deallocate the memory. So I will um, delete bad alloc. And now, if we compile it again with this command, we recompile now that we've changed the code, and then we run Valgrind again, we should see that there are no memory leaks. So that is a very simple overview. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask any TAs about this. The reason we're coming to the machines on campus is because it already has Valgrind and G++ set up in a Linux environment, which is what the autograder uses. And so if you use these commands, it is exactly what the autograder is doing. And so you'll be able to see any issues you might have that you don't necessarily see on your IDE like Visual Studio.